Hi everyone, my name is Mirko Gelsomini and today I'm going to introduce you to Imagine, Embodied Learning in Immersive Smart Spaces. This work has been conducted uh, at Polytechnic Milano by me, Mirko Gelsomini, Giulia Leonardi and uh, Franca Garzotto. This work investigates the pedagogical potential of Imagine, an immersive interactive environment for educational purposes where children are exposed to auditory and visual stimuli activated by performing mid-air gestures and movements in a digital enhanced physical space. The system is remotely controlled by the teacher who can customize each experience according to a group's of individual needs, modify intensity, duration and orchestration of stimuli and action stimulus sequences. Embodied cognition theories emphasize the relationship between a physical activity and cognitive processes and are supported by a growing body of evidence from psychology and neurobiology. According to the hypothesis that embodiment can enhance the learning process, we have designed and developed an educational didactic experience within Imagine, aimed at facilitating learning of factual knowledge on a curricular subject. The experience is modeled following Kolb's experiential learning process, according to the cyclic sequence of experience reflection learning, and is divided into the different phases of challenge and initial thoughts, resources, and assessment. In the very first phase, children are welcome and imagine and the teacher presents a topic that will be discussed during the lesson, making use of images projected on the wall and on the floor. She then collects students' questions and elicits children's discussion from previous knowledge. During the resources phase, a five minutes video is projected to the wall. When the projection ends, children are called in turns, one at a time, to perform a task which consists of answering a proposed question using one of the given interaction types. Lastly, in the assessment phase, children are evaluated on their acquired knowledge. The structure of each single task was designed on the basis of textbooks currently used in primary schools. From the analysis, five types of frequently used exercise have emerged cross-cutting different subjects, which we have reinterpreted with a view to motion-based interaction. The first, the selection pattern presents the user with an explanatory image of the question on the front projection and a variable number of response option cards on the floor projection. A star projected on the floor, placed immediately in front of the user's feet, follows the student's movements. In order to select the chosen answer, the child must place the star and constantly herself over the card corresponding to the option deemed correct. The child confirms her decision standing over the card for at least 3 seconds. The second pattern, the classification, presents the user with a set of images and a series of labeled boxes both projection or the front projection. A virtual superimposed end appears following the preferred user's end. The user is asked to grab, drag, each of the images presented at the top of the screen and release each of them in the correct category, shown in the form of a box at the bottom of the frontal screen. The third case, the reordering pattern, presents a user with a series of images randomly ordered on the front screen. A virtual superimposed end appears following the preferred user end. The user is asked to reorder the option cards according to a sequence contextualized by the question. To reorder the cards, the child is required to grab, drag and release each element until the desired sequence is obtained. A pop-up will ask the user to confirm or cancel the response given after 5 seconds from a last interaction. The identification pattern requires users to recognize a given object based on its characteristics. Two different types of identification are supported. The fourth one is based on color and shape. A variable number of images are randomly distributed on the both projections. The user has to identify the item requested in question and select it by positioning her body or by moving close in her hand. The fifth one is based on position. A variable number of images are arranged neatly on the front screen. The user has to identify the item requested by the question by moving and closing a hand on its top. The sixth one, the association pattern, presents user with four frames at the top of four items at the bottom of the front projection. Each frame contains two slots, one housing an image and the other empty. The user is asked to associate, grab, drag and release each bottom item with the images presented in the frames, placing the objects in the three frame slots. Once all objects are placed in the corresponding slots, a pop-up asks to confirm or retry.
In order to investigate whether imaging can actually facilitate children's learning, a controlled experimental study was conducted. As you can see from the image, the study is based on the comparison between the learning process that takes place in a traditional classroom on the top and the one occurring in imaging on the bottom, with the aim of comparing impact on children's learning achievements. 70 children from 6 to 8 years old were recruited. They were pairwise assigned according to performance on a pretest to an experimental group on the left, subjected to the practice within imagine environment, and to a control group on the right, subjected to the traditional practice based on the frontal book-based approach within the classroom. Both groups were divided in classes accordingly. This study investigates a main research question. Could learning benefit from an immersive embodied approach compared to the traditional paper-based classroom approach? A baseline test, T0, was administered at the beginning of the first week to all students in order to establish homogeneous control and experimental groups. Two learning sections of one hour each were held in two separate days of the first week, same amount of time dedicated to similar topics at school. A short-term test in T1 and a long-term test in T2 were provided on the last weekday of the first week and after seven weeks respectively. Both imaging and classroom activities used the same exercises, proposed in the same sequence and with the same graphical contents. The immediate effect on intervention after two training sessions, which we refer as short-term retention, was evaluated based on changes in the values on the score obtained during T1 with respect to that achieved with the baseline test in T0. Short-term retention was significant for both groups, as they score an average of 18 notions. This allows us to say that imaging educational activities are a comparably effective teaching tool with respect to classroom approaches. We categorize each of the two groups into third size based on short-term retention scores. The first side can be traced back to the children who have retained fewer concepts and therefore probably those who have encountered more difficulties. The third third side is associated to those children who acquired more concepts, which we can assume have had fewer difficulties. Consequently, the second third side represents the group of children with short-term retention is in the middle range. Children belonging to the first third side retain an average of 8 concepts in class and an average of 11 notions in imagine. Results are reversed in the third third side, in which children in the control group learn an average of 27 concepts compared to 25 acquired by the children in the experimental group. In the second third side, children learn an average of 17 concepts regardless of their learning context. Speaking about long-term retention, the values of memory loss, that is the number of forgotten notions between T1 and T2, show that students from the first third side forgot an average of 7.7 .7 and 6.6 .6 notion in the control and the experimental group respectively. Almost the same difference occurred in the second third side students, who lost 8 notions in the control group against 7 notions in the experimental group. The highest memory loss can be noticed in the third third side, in which students who learn in classroom forgot between 8 and 24 notions and those who practice in Imagine forgot between none and 11 notions. In conclusion, each child memorized an average of 18 concepts in the short term and retained 7 notions while learning in classroom and more than 11 notions while learning in Imagine in the long term. Children with more learning difficulties found it easier to memorize within Imagine. The better outcome could be ascribed to the effect of a wide range of different interaction modes and the various senses involved which allowed them to more easily find the learning modality suitable for their natural inclinations. In addition, the evident greater ease with which the teacher has carried out teaching session within Imagine allows us to deduce that it is acted as a catalyst of attention, thus improving retention. Finally, we present here the conclusion and future work. The results of our empirical study are encouraging, as we detect improvements in participants' long-term retention skills that could be ascribed to the experiences in Imagine. From a broader perspective, our research suggests that motion-based immersive technology to support embodied learning activities in regular school contexts is a promising approach, as smart spaces characterized by low-medium embodiment like Imagine might lead to revisit existing educational processes as well as to reinvent new ones. In the future, we plan to leverage the potential of motion-sensing technologies by designing full-body activities that make use of iconic representational gestures so to take full advantage of the affordances of imaging. 
We will expand the study to a larger number of participants who will be involved for a much longer time, tracking their performances within each learning session. Such research will also support the creation of a corpus of data on children's bodily learning, unique in this field and valuable for educational practice and research. Eventually, this environment still holds promise in supporting children with special education needs in mainstream education, given its plethora of interact interaction modalities and stimulus that can be carefully selected by the teacher to give special education needs children the best tailored experience. Concluding, we thank PoliSocial Award, the Social Responsibility Program of Polytechnic of Milano, and the Municipality of Coronado for having funded the project. We thank also Ludomi team, the teachers and students at the Istituto Comprensivo Statale Via 4 Novembre of Coronado Milano, and Istituto Comprensivo Statale Leonardo Vinci, Coronado Milano. Thanks all.